Hi guys, it's Lisa Unger and I am here with another episode, which I always laugh when I say episode because it seems like such a silly word, but my show, another episode of my show, Three Good Things, where I talk to usually author pals, but in this case, somebody very, very special um, about what they're reading, what they're watching, what they're cooking or drinking. And we've been doing this since the beginning of of the pandemic. So, uh, and we continue through, even though Today, um, we have learned that people who um, are vaccinated don't have to wear masks. So, hmm, I'm sure we'll be discussing that. <laughs> <laughs> so today I am here with Vivian Laney and she is the super talented um, voiceover artist who has done three of my books, Under My Skin, Stranger Inside, and most recently, Confessions on the 745. And we were just recently nominated for an award together by the, the Audi Award, which is like, this probably the biggest award, right? For audio. It is. It's, it's, the, it's the Grammy of, uh, it's yeah. the Grammy of audio award of, of audio, uh, audiobooks. And it was uh, super exciting to be, to be nominated with you for bet for best mystery. And, um, I was on, uh, Vivian's really interesting website and I discovered that she is just about to or had maybe you've already done to record your 150th audiobook. Mm -hmm. Wow that's exciting. So hi Vivian thanks hi, for yeah. joining us from Massachusetts and um gosh wow what a cool job. I'm just going to start off by saying that like you so did you start as an actress and then sort of morphed into this, or is it, do you still also act as well? Tell us, tell us about it. Telling you all, I just want to say I did ride the coattails on the audio nomination because Confessions has been nominated for every <laughs> category, it seems, in Best Mystery. And congratulations on that because it oh, should be it, it. Uh, such a great read. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, you, blew, you, you did such an amazing job and you kind of, you know, you always do. And I was actually listening to different little snippets from um stranger inside and also under my skin and i was like god she's so amazing she just she just breathes all this new life into the words and it's just like it becomes like a whole other thing and, and i just appreciate that so much thanks for all the amazing work you've done for the audio honestly thank well right back at you because your characters are and i will always say this whenever i talk about your writing your characters are so psychologically complex it's like that's mana for an actor you know to be able to yeah to to climb in and explore that and have things not be uh exactly as they you know unreliable narrators unreliable. and you know oh just fabulous <laughs> We're stuff all unreliable narrators of our own lives aren't we yeah we are but it's amazing <laughs> it's i mean i'm sure you come across plenty of you know unfortunately both in, yeah. well in all categories you know yeah. um creative material that doesn't necessarily plumb those depths or mm. doesn't sure. kind of take that um sure. yeah yeah. Anyway, but yes, I did. I do. I am an actor and that is how I came to. Um, and it really does seem more like acting. I mean, it is acting. It's not not acting. It's not just like, I mean, once upon a time, I used to get these like, you know, the audio versions of your book were not necessarily acted, but these days they really are. And so it is acting. Of course it is. Well, I think there's, I'm wondering, you know, first of all, the audiobook market has just exploded, oh which was even yes, prior really to has. COVID, yeah. but you know, COVID even took it, you know, that much further. But um, I wonder, you know, I've been charting some of the um, the growth segments and certainly, you know, younger and younger people are coming in. They're coming in off of podcasts. They're coming in off of, um, you know, a lot of streaming, whatever, games or animation. And so in some ways, I think the expectations, the listener is, the listener's expectations have changed, you know, and so absolutely. And multicasts that don't I don't that didn't really used to happen as much, and now you know multicasts are more of a thing. Yes, um, yeah. In fact, I was I was going to mention that my so I have a um I had on at the end of May May twenty seventh I have a uh, a short a serial short story anthology releasing from Amazon. 
um, called House of Crows. And they, in fact, have done that. They have done a multicast that every story has a different, you know, because there's a, it, each story focuses on another character. So every story has a different, um, has a different character, uh, has a different actor voicing over. And uh, when they sent me the, um, the audition tapes, usually I get, you know, something else that the actor has done. But in this case, they auditioned them with the House of Crows material. So I got to hear two and three different people for um, for each, each story. One. So they were sort yeah. of designated for the story yeah. for the particular story for That's... that character. So I was like, wow, I've never. I mean, that was a really interesting. That was a really interesting thing because it really did. It did kind of. It, it put a lot of different texture onto it. And then there were, of course, there were some people when I was like. Oh yeah, that's exactly the right voice, right? Like I could just hear it like that, even though like, you know, I don't even know what it was about that, that, you know, caused me to feel that way. But it, so yeah, the multi, the multi uh, character acting is pretty amazing. Well, I think that's the thing about it too, is how kind of ineffable some of this stuff is. It's not that, yeah. you know, I'm sure you got excellent options all across the boards. It's just, Right. So it's, it's just the same as with casting for theater or film or television. You know, you're going to get a number of really accomplished people. Really talented people. Room, and they're going to bring, hopefully, different things to it. But you got to make a decision at some point. And yeah. sometimes there's that, you know, I keep thinking of that image from the original Star, Star Wars, because that's how old I am. Where, you know, the shot comes down, finally drops into the yeah. whole Death Star. But it's got to be that precise. And sometimes yeah. things yeah. just, I think, land that way. You know, you get that... You know? Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. And I definitely felt that. And I really do hope that you're going to be doing the, the last girl, last girl ghosted. So how do we make that happen? Do I, do, I have no, know. I have no idea who's doing oh. the, the casting on it. If it's still, I'll write, a, I'll not, write but... a note, said, please. We need to have <laughs> here. I'm sure that I'm sure that you'll probably be the one I'm sure that you'll be the first one they ask. So I mean, how could they not, right? Well, so. thank you. No, this is, I mean, well, they may decide that, you know, they may make a decision that it, it merits bringing in new blood sometimes, you know, they make those decisions too, so. Yeah, I mean, you can't, I mean, it's it's a crazy business. We can't predict these things. Nope, nope. Mm -hmm. um, so 150 audiobooks. Um, <laughs> so do, are you, so obviously you're, probably your first love, your first passion was acting, right? But are you also an avid reader? Have you always been an avid reader as well? Always, always, always. And as a matter of fact, um, I have worked as a writer at points in my um, career, particularly when I was trying to support myself as an actor, um, until voiceover kind of pan, began to pan out. Uh, yeah. Not, I wasn't doing audiobooks um, until it's been the last five years that I've been doing audiobooks, but I've had um, a long commercial and promo career and promo oh, are wow. like the TV promos, you know, yeah. telling me what's coming up. Um, and so that was sort of my waitressing job because of course, you know, unless you hit it big and even I have friends, uh, you know, who've done Broadway shows and had runs and, yeah, you know, even those, unless you're a star, they pay enough to guarantee sort of a middle-class a low middle class living in New York City. Yeah, but of New course, York the minute City. the sh yeah, exactly. And once the show ends, then you know you're between jobs. And yeah. so, yeah, um, yeah. there's always that been that sense of tenuousness. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yes, but always an avid, avid, avid reader, and um, probably mostly uh, literary fiction. I was not a huge. Um, genre reader except for mysteries mm -hmm. um and uh so sci-fi and fantasy are 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 genres that i've discovered and get cast on now a lot and i've yeah. kind of fallen in love with um yeah. they're they're very new to me i mean i, I would watch them you know i would sure, i would sure. but um that type of of reading and narration was something that uh i learned over time so but yeah, no, I loved, one of my favorite things was in high school and we would, at least when I was in school, we would get um, for our English program, like a list of the summer books yeah. that we had to read before we came in. Now, I don't know why, because I don't remember ever answering a single question about right, anything right. I'd read. <laughs> I just want you reading. Oh, but I loved, I'd get, you know, I'd get in my rocking chair in my bedroom and that would be that. I'd be gone for hours. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, obviously most, most writers are first and, and foremost readers. I mean, that's where we fall in love with story, of course. 
Um, so is there anything for you right now that like a book that you either narrated or one that you recently read or something that, you know, you just have always loved and returned to again and again for comfort? Is there anything that you can think of? Well, I, I'm not, it, it, this is something I haven't returned to. Um, it's actually, um, I recently, uh, and it's just, she just, it was just released, um, Elizabeth McCracken's Souvenir Museum. Oh. Um, and I'm sort of, re they're short stories and I'm taking oh. them sort of, and I'm, I'm reading, I'm not actually listening. I listen a lot, um, but I'm, I'm reading that and I'm finding it very useful because I have a little bit of a, a thrill and then a cry. It's sort of reconnecting <laughs> me to my humanity because I kind of feel we were talking a little bit yeah. um, about isolation yeah. and that we're both really comfortable with it in a way, but that there's also, you know, it's been such a time of upheaval and whatever else. I feel like I've had some sort of core faith shaken in the yeah. last year, year and a half or yeah. so. And on some level, I'm sort of giving myself this in the morning to like read a story and like have that connection with my humanity again. And then I come out. So I'm trying to steer clear of social media because I can feel oh. the effects it has on me. Um, and the only other thing that I listened to, which is the exact opposite and worked me up into a state, but boy, it was really well done, was the audio book of the the empire of pain, Patrick oh, Radden. Patrick yeah. Radden. I have that. There. That book is on my. That book is on my shelf right now. Where is it? I'm looking for it. It's oh. well worth the read. Oh, Listen, it's it's tremendous. But boy, yeah. I mean, I couldn't stop listening, and he does a great job of his own narration. Oh, Very, wow. he's terrific. But. Um, I would have kept listening to all 17 hours straight if it weren't for like the sense of outrage that would overcome me. So I'd have I to know. calm down. It's such a, it's such a, uh, it, I, I know, I do know quite a bit about um, that story, not necessarily about the Sacklers and their actual role, but just the entire um, Epidem epidemic. The yeah. And uh, I actually do know quite a bit about it and it is, it is so unsettling. Um, and so there's so many layers to that story and uh, so many, and, and so many problems dovetail um, in, in that, in, in that situation that um, it, it is hard, it is hard to read. I actually, um, I'm trying to remember the, uh, the original book that I read, which was like written by um, a journalist, a Los Angeles Mayor? journalist. No, sorry. What, uh, I'm sorry, what did you say? I said John Mayer, um, but that's not who I think you're talking about. No, um, I, I'm going to put, I'll put it in the notes when I post the, when I post this on, um, when I post this on Facebook, but yeah, and I actually many times had to, I had to put it down and just kind of walk away from it. And I, it took me a long time to read it because I was just like, I can't believe this, this cannot be true. And it was just painful. I mean, it's a painful thing to, um, to read about. And I just, uh, you know, there, there's now an HBO documentary and the, who, the author that you're referring to, the journalist may actually be interviewed and I'm going up I'm on sure now. Sure Keith is. is there as well um, on it. And it, it's um, the Alex Gibney's um, uh, documentary. It literally was just released in the last day or so. Okay. And um, I, I started watching the first uh, two hour episode last night. I think it's in two parts. And um one of the things that I did see on Twitter, I think it must have been yesterday or the day before, and this is the, you know, this a heartbreaking thing about it is somebody noted in some comment, um, uh, somebody posting about the, the documentary, something like, this is a really important story, but I just worry that, you know, don't in the rush to, to you know, resolving this or cracking down on it not to lose sight of the people who are actually in pain, in pain. exactly and, in and it's like this is it's, yes. this is also yes. harrowing i know i mean and that's really the one of the most unsettling pieces to it that i found anyway is that initially there were all these people in just tremendous pain that were not being helped Right, like that was the original impetus for this search for yeah. the, you know, the 12 hour pain relief or like that kind of miracle idea of like 12 hour non-addictive pain relief. And like, so there were people and there were these, there were professionals that they were, they were, I think they were called pain advocates where they were working to getting doctors to recognize pain as one of the vital signs. 
right? Like that you are, you are in pain. What is your, what is your pain level from, from one to 10? And, and then all these doctors like who came up at a certain time in the culture, they, they knew that there was no such thing as a non-addictive pain medication. They knew that. And that was why they were so hesitant. And then, I mean, obviously we know what happened. Well, there was a, there was a tiny study. There was a tiny study done on oxycodone. It was like, decades ago. And the report was that, um, uh, that it was not addictive, post-surgical, in a hospital setting, carefully monitored, carefully by, monitored. by medical right. staff. And so they took that idea that it was not addictive, because that was the one piece they took from it. And that was the one report on which the entire um, oxygen. And that the FDA signed off on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then yep. it was a whole, and then it was a whole marketing and, you know, farm, big pharma, big medicine, you know, thing that just kind of, uh, anyway. I know. I remember one yeah. of the things that struck me after the, um, the Harry, um, uh, Megan interview with Oprah mm -hmm. that I was again seeing on Twitter that friends <laughs> in England, I was seeing retweets of, of British friends saying, Forget the interview. What is it with American intelligent, uh, intel, uh, American television, and pharma ads? I don't understand. They couldn't. They, didn't say, they weren't saying a word about this interview. They were just like beyond. They were shocked. Yeah. I know, and it is shocking if you really think. If you about stop it. Like, and think about it, you have. Yeah, to if you never out. watch TV, which we rarely do, everything we watch is is streaming. Yeah. When you turn on the TV, you're like. Oh my God, it's just not, it's a nonstop barrage of like, you know, if you have this, you know, ask your doctor for this and you're like, um, well, I don't, I mean, like if I, if I had that, would I, would my doctor not tell me right. what I should? It's three quarters <laughs> of the auditions I get from my agent. Three oh, quarters so of the commercial auditions yeah. is, um, yeah. well, it may be two thirds, two thirds. The other yeah. part there is made up with like just healthcare general. It does seem to be the biggest market of sales yeah. right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. <sighs> were we supposed to keep this light? Oh, Sorry about we were that. We supposed to keep it 20 minutes. <laughs> I can't do it. The, everybody knows yeah. I can't do it. They, they, they laugh when I say yeah. I'm going to try to keep it in 20 minutes. We, it's impossible. So just I'm also fast upbeat. forward through the pain stuff if you're not interested. <laughs> in the books. So just to refresh, the books were Elizabeth McCracken. The Souvenir Museum short stories. That's what I'm currently Museum reading. And Empire of Pain, both um, very, um, I'm sure, uh, intelligent, exciting reads. And I'm adding them immediately to my TBR. Uh, and I'm a sucker for the return read of Pride and Prejudice. You know, every oh, few sure. years I definitely yeah. click back in and I, I know very predictable, but I can't resist. No, so. I have a couple of tea. I mean, it's a, a, the Jane Eyre, uh, Atlas Shrugged, you know, like yeah. they're just books that I return to again and again, just because, you know, they're just in and, and a, and a way too, it's almost like when you have these beloved books and you go back to them at different points in your life, there's always you, they're always different because you're that's exactly a right version of yourself to the to the books so that that's an exciting thing about you know great literature that kind of stands the test of time um so also you know like during the pandemic and then of course just in general you know i am completely addicted to story in all formats as, as are we all right like probably mm -hmm. everyone watching and you like i mean what what would you do without story i don't even want to think about it um so is there anything that you have been watching lately or anything that um uh, like a film or, or television series or something that, again that you kind of return to again and again because you just love it and you want to see those characters again anything that you I'm see? not so much of a t return watcher and it's not because I, I don't want to it's almost as if I it's almost as if I deny myself the joy of that <laughs> figuring like I'll reserve that for when I really need it down the road like you know <laughs> if you buy something like a piece of clothing that you're like I love that. And I can't wait to wear it. And then you're like, maybe this isn't the right thing. Right. So do a lot. <laughs> right. And then it just sort of molders there. Exactly. Um, so I'm trying to think what there, I did go back. Um, there's a, there was a British show, uh, sex education. I think it was called. Oh, it was yeah. I loved it. It was oh, just so yeah. cotton candy colored. Um, 
and I love Gillian Anderson oh, and she was great in it, but the rest of the cast was phenomenal. And I almost had to be, you know, it was one of those things that somebody recommended and I kept ignoring. I'm like, that's not going to be for me. And then I loved it. And it just right. made me kind of joyful. Um, so that, that I think is standing out. And then I'm embarrassed to admit that a lot of my time is spent watching and listening to true crime podcasts, oh, to yeah. those types of documentaries. I'm, I'm afraid I'm exactly the woman that people make fun of on right. SNL, you know, like, <laughs> murder so i'm enjoying more um uh, mara from uh eastman uh is that it oh mayor of easton Ma mayor we, of East we just yeah. started watching mayor of easton uh two days ago and towards the middle of uh the first episode i was like oh i don't know maybe this is too grim or something you know like i feel like it like which you know is a lot coming from me right but i was like <laughs> I was like, you know, we had just been watching some an, an animated movie with Ocean, the the uh, my daughter, the day before, and I was like, maybe we need to kind of stick with that. But then my um, a friend of mine was like, no, no, no. She's like, if you didn't finish the first episode, make sure you finish it and just go on because it really gets amazing. And I was like, okay, and we did, and it is, it's fantastic. It's just such great actors too. Holy cow! Yeah, you know? she is amazing. I mean, she's really, you know, it's just like Kate Winslet is just kind of like unrecognizable from anything that she's ever done before. She really yeah. embodies that. That she role. does. Yeah. Yeah, and I kind of love, as they say, a, a gritty female detective. There's something right? I, do, I do too. I do too. Like, um, it kind of in a weird way reminds me of Happy Valley. Did you ever yes. like, watch that? Oh, isn't that brilliant? Oh my god. Yes. Now that I have gone back and watched, but I've had to yeah. fast forward through one or two parts. I'm like, I can't. I know. Watch it's that pretty. Again. It's pretty harsh. It's pretty harsh. A yeah. boy, and but, she's phenomenal. Oh my god, incredible! Really incredible. Um, yeah, so that, those are, those are some great ones. And I actually just posted on Twitter a little while ago, um, or like, I should say, I posted on Twitter a little while ago about the, uh, the New York magazine just came out with a list of the best, uh, best crime podcast. Ooh, ooh, okay. Yeah, and so there's some really good ones on there, but some of my favorites are on there, like, um, uh, serial, of course, which is, I mean, it's the gold standard for crime podcasts and like talk about like a voice, right? Sarah, is it, it's Sarah Koenig. Sarah Koenig, Koenig, I think Koenig. especially pronounced yeah, I say and, Koenig too. Yeah, yeah. And I think that it's like, you were saying that earlier that it's like kind of the, you know, like, um, it's like a, a new expectation for what a voice should sound like, you know, like it's not, a, it, there's a, there's a, there's a way that certain people talk like you have it, of course, and like other certain broadcasters have it. And it's just like a way of talking that elevates the, <laughs> the material. Well, that's a nice way to thank you, Lisa. That's very kind. No, but I, I think it's, you know, she's a, she, she's a classic storyteller, you know, okay. that's, you know, you know, one could have, there are, there are lots, there are actors, and I actually know some non-actors who are very good narrators. Um, yeah. But it, they just know how to, they know how to tell the story and you know, illuminate it, but you're right. There was a way in, in some ways it kind of broke our way of listening and Absolutely. reframed it, you know, right. um, and now she it's like, like kind of studied at, she like studied under Ira Glass, right. right? And who also has one of the, who also has one of those voices. So maybe it's that kind of like, you know, this American life NPR type voice that we like have started to come to expect, I think. Um, and the other one was, uh, I, I hope I'm not going to get this wrong. Is it in the dark? That was the other. In the dark, Madeline Barron's yes. program with the Curtis Flower. I mean, I've listened yes. to both seasons, but that was unbelievable. Yes. I mean, just, yeah. just intense, intense listening. So yeah, so for all you true crime um, podcasts I'm gonna look that that up. out there, you know, um, there's a there's some there's some really great ones. There's some really great ones. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think we kind of we. <laughs> we all nourish ourselves, right? With story, like, you know, whether we're acting or we're writers, like you have to recharge your batteries, right? I mean, that's how we do it. Like, I mean, I feel like if I pick up a book that's just fantastic, you know, and it transports me, which is, you know, harder and harder to, harder and harder to do. Um, but like, I that recharges my batteries as a writer. I feel like, you know, that like initial sort of, 
you know, that kid, that kid who's like, oh, so excited to like open a book and like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so amazing. I'm like always waiting to kind of reconnect to that feeling. And so that's like one of the ways I nourish myself, but yeah. Um, so this is my segue into the third element of three good oh. things nourishing ourselves like so are you so was there something during the pandemic during lockdown that you and your family would like cook again and again for comfort or is there something that's like your go that's like your go-to or maybe as like you know my pal Karen Slaughter is like yeah I really like this bag of chips and salsa you know like <laughs> that's my kind of cooking right and my other friend um the fantastic writer Samantha Downing she was like yeah I don't know how to use my stove or if I you know if I even if I did I, I probably wouldn't use it and she lives in New Orleans so there's like no end of like great food yeah so um yeah so is there anything like that for you something like a go-to meal or comfort food or or even a cocktail yeah, no, I would say I'm, I am not much of a cook, um, although I was raised Italian. And so like oh. the holidays, I'm prepared to <laughs> like do the lasagna from scratch and go to yeah. Arthur Avenue and buy the fresh oh, noodles yeah. and everything yeah. else, you know. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the rest of the time, I'm like, yeah, that's when I cook. But I did find um, a recipe that just looks so basic to me, and it is. Uh, and it's a pasta with crab sauce. Oh, and yeah. uh, basically, I saw in Costco one day. Uh, when I was in there, double mast, like right. <laughs> this tub of like fresh crab. And I'm like, I'm going to, because I'm not going out, I'm not spending money. I think I'm going to spend the 20 bucks on that tub of crab. All and right. now I have to figure out something to do with it. And so this recipe, it is so basic. I'll, I'll have to, I'll send you a link for it so that, because I don't have it prepared, but it literally is just garlic, um, chicken broth, but you can use vegetable broth um, sure. if you want to sort of take you know, if you want to make it more vegetarian, I guess. Right. Um, although I guess the crab is, is negligible there. Um, <laughs> parsley or and like pescatarian <laughs> and a little, a little olive oil. And that is essentially it. Oh, and you just yeah. saute it quickly in the pan. It's the garlic and the, um, and the part that that's it it's just it but it's amazing it's actually that's all you need is garlic good. oil and whatever thing it is yep <laughs> yep and then just toss it over pasta this is true exactly this is there's true. Re there's really that's it that's like every that could be every meal and you'd be good to go got your protein you've got your carb you've got your oils your you're good I think they've always known how to do it right simply and get that yeah. done plus I'm really lazy and that just pop that can and put it in and there we go and I feel like it's, wow, worth, it's, it's worth every bad. penny every penny of that 20 bucks <laughs> it is you could it probably is. Feed, you could probably get like two or three meals out of it maybe more right no that's exactly right that's right. Other, <laughs> yeah because again I don't want to be cooking again for another few days. At exactly. Least, so. you, you've gone to all this trouble to prepare a meal. It should at least last <laughs> you. <if> you <laughs> I mean, that's just good home economics. Truly, truly. Just, right? Oh my gosh. Yes. You just put me in mind of that. My seventh grade. And I even remember yeah. her name, Mrs. Eck. She, no kidding. EK. Um, <laughs> She, she was, she bad. seemed not the most hygienic person in her way, <laughs> it, but that may be a bit me as an overwrought seventh grader, but she also would take, she'd crack an egg. And of course it was only girls in the class at that oh, point. Naturally. And naturally. And she would take her finger and scoop out all the, do you say abumen, ab, abulin, the, mm -hmm. the, that sort of the, the stuff that adheres, the clear, right. this, she would take her finger, <laughs> like scrape it out, like with her not entirely clean fingernail. And I would, uh, and even though it would go into an oven and I understood that there was that some process by which <laughs> it was converted <laughs> out of antibiotic, off. right? I'm like, I'm not eating that. I'm not eating that. <laughs> so I just took you all the way back to, I often think that it's a lost art you know, the art of home economics. I mean, the idea of like, I mean, I can't even believe there was such a class, you know, no. if I, that you would go and I remember my class, it was not just girls. There were girls and boys wow. in the class. And um, I, I, I feel like we should maybe, it's kind of like a lost thing to the educational system. It's kind of like how, you know, they used to have all those the trade and technical classes yeah, and, yeah. and like 
you know, all these different things. It's like, and then home economics, which I think is just very basic for people. Like if you could just learn if people just knew how to measure how easy it was to cook, right? It, it really is so easy. Like if you think right. about what you just said, like just throw, if you just put some, if you just put some tomatoes, some shrimp, some olive oil, some garlic and sauteed it and put it over pasta, like you would just have a full complete meal that would have taken you m mere minutes, truly. As and without husband, any weird stuff in it added, any weird you know, stuff no, in it, no takeout containers and all that. Like, right. I think if people just, I feel like that, I feel like this needs to happen. We need to, I okay, we're getting on that. To, <laughs> we need a class. Come on. We've got a task. <laughs> my friends will, my husband will fall over laughing when he hears I'm at the spearhead of reintroducing home economics yeah, into the American like, school <laughs> system. But look at me really? and be like, D I don't even see vacuum. What? <laughs> like, I don't know where the vacuum is. I do we have one? Do we have one? <laughs> so, so Vivian, tell me what are you can or can you talk about what you're recording right now or what you're about to record or just um I'm just finishing up on um uh an um a mystery that's um got a, a sort of light playful uh oh. bent on it. So um that is um uh is it, it and I'm sorry, I should, the author I believe is Gwen Florio, I think she's a okay. journalist. Oh okay, um, great. Anyways. And um I've got um an ongoing series for uh, a science fiction uh narrator, uh, I'm sorry, writer, Lindsay Baroker that I'm returning to and oh. um and I think, and I just finished up, this one was a, this one was an interesting one. I just finished up on a nonfiction that was about um, a group called the Sacred Band, which was a group of um, uh, fighters in Greek times. And it was 300 men who were lovers, paired lovers. And they were, uh, it was a band put together by the Thebans and, you know, coming up against the Spartans. And it was fascinating. However, wow, I will also that say really, that is super fascinating for an eight hour book. It was, it's called the sacred band oh and it'll God. probably be out in about um, a month or two. It'll be released, but it was 400 plus terms of pronunciations wow. that I, that so that was an interesting one that took quite a while to kind wow. of get through and keep checking back, you know, Epimenondis, Pelopidus, um, Aga, Aga, I can't even remember it now, I guess, yes. you know, I, I want to would, I would see it on the page and want to say it one way. Yeah, no, that's not the way you say it. So <laughs> no, it's a great I love this gig. I mean, it's thrilling. Oh my God, it's, it sounds so fascinating. You get to learn, you know, you're reading, you're reading, you're acting, you're learning. Yeah. And you know, it just sounds like an awesome. An but awesome. I get to read, I mean, quite honestly, to have gotten to read you and oh. Straight, uh, each one from each one for me, I remember getting the first one um, under my skin and being like, wow, this is intriguing. This character fascinated me. But then Stranger Inside has such a place in my heart. That's oh, there's you. something about those characters, both of them that just wormed their way. And 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 the police detective the who was retired him. I have a soft spot for. But I will say when I got confessions. I started, I got through the prologue and I'm like, wow, this is like the mother load. And <laughs> even when I sent in, cause I have to send in the first five to 10, five minutes or so, or 15 minutes just for review to Harper audio in that case. Yeah. And um, the producer there was always very encouraging, but she was like, this was a new level of encouraging. She was like, wow. And I'm like, yeah, this material, I just, your everything was so distinctive it was right there Lisa it just I was on such a ride oh thank you I'm I still really get excited so thinking much. about it thank, it you. Was thank you. you thank you for gifting us all with it honestly oh, so kind. thank you so much it's such a great I'm I'm so glad to know you and I also I'll, I'll just finish up by, by saying like of course we did not do this in 20 minutes and why should I even try honestly I don't know but I was so thrilled I remember um, when I got to meet you at an unlikely story. So um, an unlikely story, which is in, um, it's in, it's right outside of Boston, Plainville, right? Plainville, Mass. Yeah. Uh, it's and, like sort of by the Rhode Island border. Right, and it is an absolutely uh, fantastic story. It's owned by Jeff Kinney, who in our house is basically like a rock god. 
right? Like we just, we, we literally worship him. And, um, and Kim Havens, who's like the absolutely stellar book, books, uh, bookseller, and who's also like a longtime reader of mine. And um, so I got to go to this very special store and meet Jeff Kinney that night. And he like, he FaceTimed with Ocean, my daughter, and she almost like lost consciousness. Like, she was just, like, <laughs> and then I got to meet you you were on my signing line and I was like oh my god Vivian and it was like su such an exciting night so thank you for being part of that like very like the pre-pandemic yeah the pre-pandemic uh book tour um wow yeah I don't know what the future of the book tour is but that was like definitely one of my favorite appearances with the great uh Hank Philippi Ryan who was um, who was there with me as well that night. And so it was like, just like one of the, you know, one of the best book signings ever because um, of all of those things. So thank you for being a delight, a delight to be part of it. That place is beautiful. It, it is a very special store. So all readers, authors, whomever, they definitely need to visit either in person when you can or online because it is just a really special store. And you can also always get your signed wimpy kid. <laughs> I mean, what more could you ask? Honestly, nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, Vivian, thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I know everyone's going to be super fascinated to hear um, about this. And I think we should do it again, like maybe for Last Girl Ghosted. And you could talk, we could talk a little bit more about like process. Absolutely. We could always share, I can show you some of the sound files, that type of thing. That's oh yeah, that'd be awesome. No, people should reach out if they've got any questions too, just about the process. I'm always happy to, to share our talk. So, and uh, I will put, um, I will put your website also when I post on Facebook so people can visit you and learn more about what you do. And also you coach as well, right? Yeah. I'm actually in the yeah. midst of coaching right now for, uh, also again by zoom, uh, yeah. for main media workshops. So, okay, which is great. So thank you so much. This has been a delight for me and I've been looking forward to it. It's nice me to see you. Thanks, Vivian. All right. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Lisa Unger, and this has been Three Good Things. And you can learn more about me at lisaunger.com. I'm super easy to find. Thanks for being here.